Imaginary community. Imaginary community is really a synonym in the book for the false we. With the term false we being used more frequently to describe the political form of the imaginary community and imaginary community being used more frequently to describe the ontological displacement of our collective being from the here-ness of true mutual recognition to a collective image out there that we each imagine we are in and are one of. So in, in today's world, in 2020, Donald Trump wants to keep America great again. He's, he's the president. So I'm speaking to future generations here. So when he says keep America great again, he is referring to not to the, a really existing world of I and thou, you, we, you and me together, present in the room together, but rather to an imaginary world where we are great. Uh, it's, it's a hallucination of an idealized community that is what I also call the false we in the book. That is not the we that we really are, but because we aren't, because that true we of authentic, loving community is not something that we have or live in, there's a displacement or substitution of our longing for that onto a kind of grandiose imaginary community that we imagine we are one of, in, and a part of. So the, the false, really the false we, as I use that term in the book, and the imaginary community are the same thing, uh, that with slightly different emphases. If we don't feel in true community, but are actually withdrawn into ourselves, engaged in the performative world of fulfilling all our roles, that we imagine to be who we really are, because that's how we are conditioned, but actually we are withdrawn into ourselves. We are vulnerable to seeking substitute communities where we can, in the imaginary, feel connected to each other. And people can play upon that in inflated nationalism is a good example of that, where people are excessively hooked up to and prideful of being German to take the, you know, the Nazi rallies where it, the, uh, Hitler could, you know, create these fantastic experiences of we Germans are all together here. In fact, the people it, who actually there in relation to each other did not feel that they were connected in a sense that I, in a loving sense of I and thou, but rather they were all part of the same imaginary we that was, in their case, repairing, they thought, an underlying feeling of historical humiliation that their people had suffered. So by making the swastikas larger and larger, the idea there is to create a more and more perfect imaginary community that we are all a part of, that actually understood collectively was in the service of the denial of a deeper longing, a denial of the vulnerability associated with the longing to be loved, cared about by other human beings, really embraced by other human beings. The entire gradient that that the German people were living in at that historical moment was, on the one hand, the vulnerability to being collectively humiliated as a people, an imaginary, and on the other, inflating that to a very, very fantastical size where we are all great, our swastikas are bigger and bigger until we're the master race ruling the world all an imaginary community substituting for an underlying absence of true community. True community doesn't need or want or have anything to do with these, these forms of racism, of 
hyper-idealized fantasies, uh, all of that is a substitute for something empty or absent at the center of being. Okay.